Hi, this is Stacia, and I thought I would share a game that I played at the Columbus Open. And um, this was a really tough tournament for me. <laughs> it was the first low time control I ever played. And um, I think that shows because I did pretty poorly. Um, but I do want to learn from my mistakes. And it is a pretty interesting game I'm going to show you. So my opponent was rated only 1320. Although I think he played stronger than that. And um, my rating was around 1520. And I played much lower than that. <laughs> All right, so um, he played d4, knight f6, bishop f4. So this signified that I'm probably going to get a London system. I always played d5 against this, um, e3. And my idea against the London system is to just get my bishop out of the chain as well. Interest, interesting thing about this move, bishop f5, is that it is not a book line, um, at least not in this database, but it's the one of the computer's top choices. So I really do like this. And I know a trap in this line, so I was kind of hoping he would go into it. <laughs> All right, so he played c4, and now the trap is almost set. If I play e6 and he plays um, knight f3, there's a trap here, and I'll show it to you real quick. Why not? All right, so here, add new variation. And um, yeah, so here you can play bishop takes b1. And white should probably take back. And then we have this check. So bishop e4 check. And white is going to lose their castling rights pretty much um the best move here is king e2 and that's a terrible move for white to have to make um because they lose their castling rights and they're going to hinder their the development of their light square bishop and therefore their rook as well most likely and a lot of people uh, make the mistake of playing knight d2 here and against this, we have, yeah, knight e4 attacking the pinned piece. And there's really no way for white to not lose material here. Um, so just to continue, like bishop d3 is considered the best move. But then knight takes d2. Can't take back with the queen, obviously. So queen a4 check. Knight c6 defends the bishop. Yeah, no. E3, but bishop a5, and we have discoveries, and we're up material. So this is a really good trap to know. Um, and I kind of went for a variation of this in the game. All right, so getting back to where we were. All right, so c4, and I was hoping for that continuation. So I played this. And now my opponent played, yeah, this weird move, c takes d. Um, this is not an accurate move. White should be developing. Um, here, probably the best move is knight takes d5. Um, you recapture the pawn and attack the bishop. Instead, I went for a variation of the trap. So I wanted to take his castling rights. He kind of surprised me with queen a4 check. It's funny because I've studied that in the trap line, but I still managed to not uh, predict that move. Now, um, what would you play as black here? So I was scared to play c6 because it looks like I just lose a pawn, but truth be told, um, I'm going to lose a pawn no matter what. I chose to play bishop takes b1. So I played knight d7 here. Although c6 is the best move. And then he played, yeah, I think he just took here. Um, that's a little inaccurate. Black can actually win a pawn by taking this pawn first. And now I can just retreat my bishop, say, to here. But he cannot take this piece now. And then you can retake with the queen or the bishop. And 
whites up a pawn then. Um, but because he chose to take the bishop, I had I now had time to recapture. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong thing here. Bishop takes b1, queen a4. Here, takes. Yeah, and now I have this move. And this wins a tempo on the bishop, so he moved. And now the move bishop b4 check. So I, I like that I got to play my knight to d5 because it defended this. Um, so it didn't matter that his queen was there. I could still play it. And he was forced to play king d1. So I love this. You know, I thought I was doing pretty well here. His king's going to be in the center of the whole game. It looks like white's behind on development. So I thought I was doing pretty well here. Although, yeah, and the computer kind of agrees. Um, problem is I made sort of a misstep here. I played a5. My idea was to post my bishop in an aggressive square. So what's the problem with this? Um, yeah, a3 would kick my bishop out. So I'm not sure what the point of that was. <laughs> I should have just played bishop e7 right away, not allowing the a3 tempo move. All right, but a5 was played. My opponent played rook c1, so going after this pawn. It is currently defended by these two pieces, though. But you have to be careful because he does have the move e4. All right, so I could castle here. And it's really interesting um, because you've got this pin down the d-file. So in a lot of variations, white can play knight c5 and utilize that pin. But let's continue. All right, so I played c6 to defend this, um, which is fine. You could tactically defend it just by castling, though, and playing knight c5. All right, um, queen c2 was played. So there's a lot of pressure coming down the c file all of a sudden. Now a castle. Computer actually wants h5. <laughs> e5 is also a move that it wants, um, so breaking with e5. I really like that idea now. But I castled. It's a reasonable move. And now, um, yeah, this is the position I find really interesting because, okay, if you were evaluating this position, how would you evaluate it? And the answer is the position is equal. It looks like black is is better developed and aggressively posted. So this knight and this bishop look really active. Black's castled. White's never going to castle. And white has development problems. But the problem, the reason this position is equal is because of the tempo moves a3 and e4. Not only that, there's also bishop d3, which hits the h7 pawn. So there's actually three tempo moves in this position for white. And for that reason, black's really not ahead. Position's pretty much equal. All right, so um, bishop d3 was played. I played h6 to save my pawn. And then he played knight f3. And so you can see just by playing one of the tempo moves, already white's pretty much way more developed. Um, so... Here's where I made a bad mistake. <laughs> I probably looked at the board for 10 minutes or 15 minutes trying to come up with a good plan. And I kept seeing these problems with a3 and e4. For that reason, um, and I thought about this move, bishop e7 is actually the best move. So just acknowledging that the bishop is not stable here and retreating. And you're also going to want to retreat your knight here or possibly to b6. All right, so I made a critical error, which is I looked at a bunch of candidate moves, rolled some out, but then never found a good one, panicked, and played a move pretty quickly. And I thought, oh, I'll just play b5. I think that's fine. Yeah, but b5 is not fine because it hangs the c pawn. <laughs> so I did commit this error, sadly. And my opponent now played both tempo moves here. I had to retreat the knight. Then he played a3. I have to retreat the bishop. You can see the position looks much different after these tempo moves. And now he invades with the queen. So position was equal, and now he's 
his position slightly better, and he's up a pawn. So, you know, and he has the two bishops. All right, so in this position, he's threatening this pawn. Um, so I played the move b4, which is the best move. It does save the pawn. Um, he took. And now my bishop's back, and now, now it's posted well, because there's no pawn here or here that can kick this bishop away. The only thing that could is maybe this dark square bishop, which actually happens. All right, so, yeah, I was terrified of this move here. And I thought after this, what if he does this? Um, this looks really scary and it's very tactical, but it, it turns out that um, black's totally fine in this variation. Um, black can just play rook a to c8, pinning the bishop to the queen, and then play, um, what was I worried about here? Oh, I was worried about e5 because this knight is attacked twice, and this would take away the defender. Um, the thing is, I have knight takes e5 here, and this pinned bishop is hit twice. So even after this, knight d5 can be played. Queen d7 takes... I'm sorry, what happens here? Oh, knight takes e7, let white take the queen, like so. And, yeah, and then the bishop just moves away. And this position is actually slightly better for black, but unfortunately for me, I'm only 1,500, and I couldn't calculate all that. <laughs> Certainly not accurately. All right. Um, and lucky for me, my opponent didn't even play it. He played bishop d6, so I think my bishop scared him. But his plan, his potential plan scared me, so I happily traded. And now the position's equal again, even though I'm down a pawn. Um, all right, and the only plan I really had here, since it seemed like I was never going to get e5 in, um, is I want to eliminate this b-pawn and have an outside passer. All right, so I got to work on that. Rook b1, he defended. Queen b6. I do want to note that the computer likes the move rook b4 followed by queen b6. So the idea there is that it's better to have the rook in front so you can capture with the rook and keep queens on the board. But I did play the move queen b6. Okay, so eyeing that B pawn. And these are good moves. These are what, what you call tempo moves because I have a threat and white has to defend. So he defends with rook C2. And now I make another slight mistake. Rook F to D8. Looks like a great move on the surface, but it's really not. <laughs> so I thought, hey, how could this be bad? I'm lining up my rook with his undefended bishop and his king. Well, the problem with this is king e2 gets his king off the file and defends the bishop, and now what is my rook doing here? So that did happen. And now, what should you do as black? Um, e5 is possible. Another move the computer suggested was g5. I was looking at this position thinking, wow, my knights are terrible. How can I improve them? And I saw that maybe this kind of route might be good. I could maybe trade this bishop off, threaten the queen. I don't know. It would be better than what my knights are doing now. <laughs> so knight e8. White doubles on the C file. And I looked at this and I was kind of okay with him coming down because that would leave the B pawn vulnerable. So I continue with my plan. Sure enough, he came down. 
takes, takes, takes. So I won the B pawn. And white's still better in this position, but I do have this pass A pawn, which could be could prove to be strong or maybe even winning. All right, and he pretty much forced me to trade here. I could play knight b8, I guess. Yeah, but I took. He took with the bishop. Oh, and now the losing move. Um, so out of these two moves, which one is correct? Um, so I saw that white could go after my a pawn right he wants to play rook here and there will be no way for me to stop him from winning the pawn so knight b8 makes a lot of sense um because it defends that square and then there's a discovered defense on this knight so it's a really nice move for whatever reason i didn't go with that and i decided to go on this side um but you probably see immediately the problem with this. <laughs> yeah, the move e5, and now I'm just completely lost. Um, I almost resigned here, but I decided to go for a little trick that was just total Hail Mary. I took here, and okay, there's no way he's going to fall for this. If the knight were to take this, then I have this nice fork, and I win the rook, and I'm slightly better. But... Of course, he didn't didn't fall for that, and he just played rook here, check, and now I'm going to lose my rook, and it's just completely over. So it was a sad game. <laughs> Not really happy with how I played, um, but I'm looking forward to learning from this game quite quite a bit. Um, the biggest thing I learned is that. I have sort of a mental checklist and since I don't play classical chess and slow time controls, um, I wasn't really remembering to do my checklist and I was making some impulsive decisions at times, um, such as the knight move and such as rook f to d1, not fully going through my checklist. So I'm hoping that as I do that, um, my play will get better. So. And I can give you an example of my checklist if you're interested. And yeah, if you're a better player or you just have a different checklist, I would love to hear it. I'm really interested in that sort of thing. So let me find a place in this position where it makes sense. So how about like the B5 move? All right. All right, so here um, I impulsively played B5. Now, what I like to look at in my checklist when I have a candidate move, I like to say, okay, what does this move control? And so I would think, all right, I notice I have control over the C4 square and also the A4 square. And this leads to you thinking things like, okay, well, maybe I could play A5 or maybe I could sink a piece here or, you know, things like that. Um, the second item on my checklist is what did I leave behind? <laughs> well, had I asked that question, I would have saw that I left behind a very sensitive C pawn that's about to get pummeled. So I didn't even make it to number two on my mental checklist. And then the final um, thing on my basic checklist is what is White's likely response? And had I asked that question, I would have said, oh wow, you know, the queen takes C pawn. And I would have not played the move B5. So it's things like that. Um, I'll give one other example, the rook f to d8. This looks like a good move. Um, part one of my checklist looks really good, right? Because I'm attacking a pawn that's only defended by the knight. I'm x-raying the bishop and the king. The bishop's undefended. It all looks great. What did I leave behind? Not much. So this is item number two. Um, my f pawn's a little weaker, just something to keep in mind, but it looks totally fine. And then number, or I'm sorry, and then number three, what is my opponent's likely response here? Well, if that was me on the file, I'd want to move my king. And if that was me with an undefended bishop, I would want to defend it. So, king e2. 
And now I'm not sure what my rook's doing here on the D file. Um, not the best move anymore. All right, so um, thanks for watching this game if you did. Um, if you have any other tips for me, I would love to hear them. I'm hoping to learn from this game and my other losses at the Columbus Open and get more into playing these slower time controls because I feel like um, that's going to help my chess way more than these G30 games um, and certainly more than Blitz. All right, thanks for listening.